Well, we don't want him to be run over. I just want him to calm down. Perfect. Perfect as long as I survive. Nothing quite raises the hackles like the issue of cycling. And now we have a furious spat between two great eminent media people. On the one hand, Jeremy Vine, the BBC broadcaster, uh, who wishes not to be killed while he's out cycling. And on the other hand, Jeremy Clarkson, the petrol head, who seems a bit ambiguous about whether cyclists should be run over or not. Uh, and in the middle of that, I have come to heal. I look on Twitter, Clarkson has printed a picture, up uploaded a picture of, of a cyclist in front of him who's halfway across the lane of the zebra crossing and waiting. And, and as Clarkson says, this is the kind of person who gives cyclists a bad name. And because I was, was under the influence of one third of a pint of lager, <laughs> I then stupidly said, he has every right to be there, you muppet. And what followed was like a, a saloon bar <laughs> brawl where one person shouted at another person across the bar and everyone else then starts yes, fighting. That's right. But I was just following a man, which is what sparked this whole thing off, through London the other day on a very wide road. And he was cycling right in the middle. He was, I think cyclists call it, taking the lane, yeah. preventing me from overtaking. But of course he didn't, because I just went on the other side of the road and they overtook him. And he was absolutely livid. Jeremy Vine says he just wants to get to work. But the trouble is, too often in the arguments with cyclists, they're not just trying to get to work. They're trying to get to work whilst saving the planet. They're saving the planet from all those harmful emissions. They're personally responsible for rescuing polar bears. <gasps> I just didn't realise how, just by getting on two wheels, you put yourself one side of a debate that's ideological. It's almost military. It's almost, yeah. you know, it's very physical as well. I mean, you get people who decide that you can't... I'll give you an example again, because it's all in the examples here. When you're cycling, my traditional way of cycling was to go on the left-hand side of the road. Yeah. It, now I understand, from reading everything about it, from reading government advice, that you must be more than a car door's width from parked cars in case somebody suddenly opens their door, which they occasionally do once every couple of months. So you cycle more than a car's door's width. What does that do? Where does that push you? It that puts pisses you in the, off the drivers. Yeah, yeah, it puts you in the middle of the lane. So what happens then, this happened yesterday to me, is a driver says, OK, if this guy's going to cycle and block me, I'm going round him anyway. So he comes within less than a foot of me. So I'm thinking, what? I don't know what I'm supposed to do there. I'm following government advice. I'm going to beat him anyway because he's, he's going to stop at the next light. So he can't beat me, but he's going to go round because it's important to him that I don't hold him up. So I'm, I'm at a loss. I need help. It is a dangerous activity it is. in London. It's what Jeremy Vine says in, in his piece he wrote in um, another newspaper. He said he just wants to be safe. Well, he can't yes. be. You can't be safe. You're going to ride a bicycle on a road. You cannot be safe. It's not possible. It's like saying, well, I'm going to get into this swimming pool full of sharks and I want to be safe. You can't. It won't, you won't be safe. You might get eaten. But I suppose his point is that, is that car drivers should show a degree more consideration mm -hmm. to, 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 to... Well, I try my hardest to, to do just that. <laughs> I can, no, I, I can see you doing it, John. I really <laughs> genuinely do, because I do ride a bicycle and I don't want... To, you know, they've all got cameras on their yeah. helmets. The last thing I want is for one of them to have a of footage of me in doing something inappropriate. So I do tend to drive very courteously. You are not liked. That's the problem. I don't mean you personally. I mean, mm. of course, you I are know. liked. I mean, I suppose when you first started cycling and people tried to run you over, you may have thought, is it because they don't like my show? <laughs> but it's not. It's because they don't like cyclists. They said, they said in the office, they said, look, maybe it would help if you got, and they got me for my birthday, a huge fluorescent jacket with my name on the back. I said, Christ. I said that's not going to help. <laughs> that is not going to help. Yeah, but but you're right. You, f you are suddenly hated. And uh, you are hated for taking up road space, and there's a misunderstanding about road tax. Car drivers think they pay for. But all if that you've stuff. seen the the stuff online, where the cyclists weigh in, you will get a militancy and an anger from them, which does annoy other people. Jeremy says that if he meets you, he'd, he'd, he'd shake your hand and embrace you warmly as a fellow yeah. human being. I'm sure you both. Would. Of course, I would. Course yes, would. absolutely. I mean, he's not Piers Morgan. No, no, Piers Morgan is a disgusting human being. Jeremy Vine is not that by any means. No, he's just. I think he's he's misguided on the the bicycle thing. Because I look at a bicyclist and think, well, I'm glad you're on a bicycle. Because if you were, you'd be taking up 
30 square feet of road in a car. But effectively, they will be doing that, won't they? Well, there's the trouble that when they start taking up as much space on the road as a car, which they s seem to want to do, then um, there's no point being on a bicycle in the first place.